we have a new set of literacy, literacy, digital literacy. Uh, I want to, to use this term to express, uh, let's say, a set of values and practices that people, when they are connected, they are developing. And at our research lab at the School of the Future, we've been developing a lot of researches in order to try to figure out, to understand what these emerging digital literacies are. So, in order to give an example, we've uh, finished a national survey with children and teenagers in Brazil and to understand their behavior towards the use of TV, computer, game, and a mobile phone. And we discovered that with all these four screens, the one that is more democratic throughout the world is the mobile phone. So the convergence and the mobile phone. So you see, the results we were shown here are exactly what we just found in this uh, survey. So we've been developing, so even making developments, we need to understand that we need to address the newness with new methods and new research methods and new assessments. Because another big problem that I think we, we face in changing, bringing the real world to education is that we can make different projects, but at the end we are going to be assessed by the past. So, no newness is going to survive on this. Uh, and how am I with my time? <laughs> Finished? Okay, maybe later on we can keep on. So, we've heard a lot about the use of technology and personally I believe that we can use technology to make schools porous. So, again, the communication between the real world, bringing the real world in, and using technology as a learning augment. Give those students a chance who are perhaps not so good at producing text-based answers Maybe they can make a video, maybe that's something which is closer to their heart. I come from the vocational sector and that's often the case with our students. They benefit from the technology in many ways. And my next question is, again, should we have more technology in the classroom? Please, let's take a vote on that. What do you think? More technology in the classroom or no? I would say 80% green. Ted, would you like to comment on that? So we have technology at our fingertips. What do we do with it? Uh, thank you for the um, um, question. I don't think my answer is very short. I think, um, yes, that's for sure. We will need to then, um, um, have more technology for the teachers because, you know, the students can adapt um, new technologies at very high speed and actually it's far beyond our imaginations. So on the counter power, I think um, you know, the teacher will need to um, <clears throat> adopt this new technology tools and platform to create the, uh, the lesson, the digital contents and deliver it in a much proper and simple way to the next generation of students. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. The question is, if we're looking at the teacher education today, again, um, I've been a teacher, that's my background, and I think it's very unfair that we put a lot of pressure on the teachers, do this, do that, jump through those hoops, etc., and then you will become the perfect teacher. Is there such a thing as a perfect teacher? How should we educate teachers? Denise, I'm sure you have a comment. Thank you. I would like to comment on your question. I come uh, from Uruguay, a small country like Qatar, which has been implementing a massive plan called SEVAR, based on a one-to-one -one model to introduce computers in schools. This is a true laboratory case. Plan SEVAR allowed all children in state education institutions to receive Wi-Fi laptops. But a recent study conducted by a team for our 
National University, evaluating the seven years of the one-to-one -one plan, evidence that the policies had not positive impact on learning in mathematics and reading. It, it, it may be, of course, too early to draw definitive conclusions about this plan. The truth, however, is that the technology did not change the achievement of learning. The explanation of the situation lays in the process of teacher development, of teacher education. The quality of training received by teachers affect their attitudes toward education technologies. An appropriate teacher development is required to ensure the incorporation of the educational technology into visible tactics. The lesson learned, and I finish from the Uruguay case, is that yes, we do need to bring technology into the equation in education because education has dramatically changed. However, technology without a clear pedagogical purpose is like a frame without a painting. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. I always say that, um, again, we do a lot of teacher training and it's mainly pedagogical training how to use the technology, how to use it as a learning augment. And in my opinion, one of the worst things you can do is to drive a truck in front of a school and start dishing out tablets without any training, without any purpose. So I definitely agree with you, Denise. Question is though, if we look at the teaching profession and all the possibilities we have today, I mean, we have the MOOCs, we have all the material from Khan Academy for flipped classrooms, this, that, and the other. There's a lot of content out there. But that's on the what, not so much on the how. So if we look at the teaching profession, what's happening to it? Is there a major change? Let's take an audience vote. Do you believe that the role of the teacher will be different in five years? Again, I would say we have about 90% yes. So is the teaching profession as we know it becoming obsolete? Jenna, would you like to comment on that? I would like to comment on that. I think maybe the answer is that it's not as we know it becoming obsolete, but maybe it should be. So when we're talking about technology, we can think back to um, how we've always thought that technology would reinvent teaching. If you go back to the invention of the radio and the TV and the VCR and how we expected all of these things to dramatically change the way education was delivered, and that was never really the case. Now, I do think the internet and the prevalence of all the devices that students use make this a different case. But it, it does, as you've said, go back to the teacher training. You know, when teachers are not digital natives in many cases, how can they be trained to help students mediate these new technologies and new ways of learning? I also saw, I think, someone tweeted that we need to be considering the ways that children learn naturally. And going back again to what Dr. Solberg said about the many factors that influence education beyond just the teacher. So the things that the teacher uses, the curriculum, the standards. I think in the U.S. we've seen that a lot of those things have gotten in the way of the natural ability of children to learn. We're going through a huge curricular shift to the common core standards. And I think that part of that is a result of the concern that we are doing too much over teaching students and not letting them learn on their own. So back to the original question, will teaching be obsolete? My hope is, at least in the U.S., that there is a dramatic change, but that the full burden of that is not put on teachers, that they are given the tools and then it can be evolution, not revolution, because I think that's to the greater benefit of teachers and students. 
So we definitely need to recognize all learning, <laughs> formal, informal, and non-formal. Question is, again, getting back to the teaching profession, <laughs> Denise, thank you for your question. Um, I think uh, the rapid development of uh, technological tools uh, will certainly bring dramatic changes in the traditional ways of teaching and learning in the 21st century. But my claim is uh, that the teaching profession will not become obsolete. In fact, I claim it is more important than ever. Based on uh, research and the best comparative studies currently available, teachers are called to play a central role in the 21st century. Let's try to understand why. Ample evidence exists of the important role that teachers play in the learning outcomes of students. Research has shown that from the school side, teachers are the most important factor in determining how much students learn. There is no other input, textbooks, computers, infrastructure, or other materials that comes close in its impact on student learning. Teachers are the single most influential and powerful force for equity access and quality education. Many have suggested that the way we learn is radically changing with the explosion of information technologies. And this is certainly true. Teachers and schools must catch up with changing times. However, I propose that, number one, the right of to quality education can only be achieved through quality teachers. Teachers' presence and knowledge have the strongest and clearest impact on good learning outcomes. Number two, teachers are the foundations of good schools, and good schools are the pillars of healthy and democratic communities. Yes. working conditions and perform their jobs in the private 
and even dangerous environment. That's the reason why policies that address the need for teacher training, support and attention should be at the core of national educational reforms and planning. Let me finish by reminding you the UNESCO slogan for the last global action week on education. Without teachers, a school is just a baby. Thank you.